remote city in the Amazon. Mr. Mendes was shot dead inside his home in northwestern Brazil on Thursday. Deep in the Amazon, in December of 1988, the fate of the rainforest was changed by a murder. In the small town of Chapuri, Chico Mendes was shot and killed. Chico Mendes' filio was shot dead Thursday night. The victim was devoted to preserving Brazil's irreplaceable rainforest. And he paid for that, apparently, with his life. Two armed guards had been hired to protect him. But they were inside his house when Chico was hit by a bullet in his backyard. Chico had led the fight to protect the largest rainforest on the planet. It was a fight that alerted the world to the exploitation of the Amazon and changed the makeup of the rainforest for decades to come. The Amazon basin is rich in rubber trees that produce latex. And for a long time, they were exclusive to this rainforest. Native people had collected latex or liquid rubber for centuries. But in the late 1800s, after the Europeans turned their attention to it, people started extracting latex on a mass scale. It became a valuable material in rapidly industrializing nations where motor cars with rubber tires started hitting the roads. The Amazon quickly turned into a very profitable global resource, especially in Brazil, where businessmen started moving into the rainforest. To keep up with the high demand, wealthy rubber barons forced indigenous people to work for them as rubber toppers. And they directed waves of migrants from the coast to the rainforest. Rubber toppers were forced to work in exchange for the use of the land, tools, or food. So the more they worked, the more they were in debt to their bosses. But the rubber boom wouldn't last long. The seeds of rubber trees such as these, smuggled out of the Amazon country, shifted the rubber production of the world to the Far East. In the 1870s, an English colonist smuggled 70,000 rubber tree seeds out of the Amazon. The seeds went from Brazil to British colonies in Southeast Asia, where they began harvesting rubber at a lower cost. Over the years, as rubber from these plantations flooded the market, prices fell, and the rubber boom in the Amazon collapsed. But demand spiked again during the Second World War, when rubber became critical to making weapons and vehicles. We are going to see to it that there's enough rubber to build the planes to bomb Tokyo and Berlin. Enough rubber to build the tank. Enough rubber to win this war. The Brazilian government recruited tens of thousands and forced them to extract latex under harsh conditions. After the war, demand collapsed again, and most rubber barons moved on to other businesses, leaving many rubber toppers in the rainforest where they settled and were now free to harvest rubber on their own terms. Among them was Chico Mendes, a young rubber topper who started out working under rubber bosses. O Chico, ele já trouxe de berço, né, o a marca e a habilidade de ser um líder. Ele aos 15 anos, 16 anos, ele ele demonstrava preocupação com a forma como os, os patrões tratavam this is Raimundo Mendes de Barros, Chico's cousin, who works and lives on a reserve in Acre State. Já de, de, de rapaz novo, ele já tinha a tendência de ser um, um líder. Como se transformou um líder, né? Chico's time to step in and lead would come in the 70s and 80s, when the Amazon began seeing deforestation at an unprecedented rate. Chico Mendes and the rubber toppers lived freely in the state of Acre for about a decade. They harvested rubber and collected Brazil nuts sustainably without damaging the forest and made a living selling what they gathered to traveling merchants. But there was a problem on the horizon. At the time, Brazil was led by a military regime that wanted to use the Amazon for economic development. So they opened it up to ranchers for business. They took over large estates, typically occupied by rubber toppers, and cleared the forest to make room for their cattle. The politics of land speculation and the large-scale deforestation that have as their objective the substitution of man by cattle. It would be a disaster if this process were allowed to continue in our region. The ranchers used intimidation tactics to expel rubber toppers. They hired gunmen and set fires to tear down the trees. 
But the rubber tappers got together and fought back. They organized empachis, or barricades, where they'd sit in front of trees or block the path to the rubber reserves to prevent loggers and bulldozers from coming through. Chico and Raimundo were both on the front lines. The empate was the form that we found to remove the pins that were were destroying, that were destroying. E a gente conseguiu juntar é, homens, mulheres, quando a luta se acirrou, a gente juntar até as crianças, né? E ir para a linha, ir para as frentes de, de desmatamento. Protecting the rubber tapper's way of life was at the heart of the struggle led by Chico. But over the years, it turned into a much bigger fight for survival. The government, backed by international organizations, built roads in the Amazon, which brought deforestation to different corners of the rainforest. As a result, by 1987, nearly 300,000 square kilometers of the rainforest had been torn down. The fight to prevent deforestation extended throughout the Amazon, and Chico became its spokesperson on a global stage. Chico Mendes. Together, we can preserve the forest and make it productive, securing this immense treasure for the future of all our children. And the world began to pay attention. We can locate about 7,000 fires every day. It involves the destruction of one of Earth's greatest natural resources, the Amazon rainforest. The rainforest is unique in all the world. And once it is gone, it is gone forever. International organizations withdrew tens of millions of dollars from the development of the Amazon. A small extraction reserve was created for rubber tappers in Acre in 1988, the first of its kind in Brazil. The land would be owned by the state, but rubber tappers like Raimundo would have the right to live and work on it. No que pese a gente viver dela, mas nós conservamos ela. Nós não destruímos ela. The reserve would keep everyone else out, especially cattle ranchers, making this entire reserve legally protected from deforestation. But in 1988, protecting the rainforest came at a deadly cost. 89 environmental activists were killed that year alone. I've already escaped six attempts on my life from the enemy. Still, I have a moral commitment to myself. I cannot abandon this struggle, even if one day I should be struck by an assassin's bullet. Cattle ranchers looking to expand their business in the Amazon saw Chico as a threat. He was given armed guards for protection, but just days after his 44th birthday, he was shot in his backyard. His killers were cattle ranchers, a father and a son, whose land had just become a protected area. E, e eu subi por volta de três horas da madrugada. Foi um, uma notícia que ainda hoje eu tenho muita, muita tristeza. O Chico simplesmente estava defendendo o direito daqueles que até então o Estado nega, se negava de reconhecer seu direito. Não tinha direito de ser assassinado da forma brutal e covarde do jeito que ele foi. Chico's death pushed changes forward in the Amazon. A larger Chico Mendes extractive reserve was created in 1990. Today, it is still the biggest in the Amazon and has protected more than 2 million acres of rainforest from a lot of the deforestation that surrounds it. It's home to about 10,000 people who can freely maintain their traditions and livelihoods. Since Chico's death, all these extractive reserves have been created. There are more than 100 spread throughout the Amazon. But the fight isn't over. Brazil's current government has pushed for more economic development in the Amazon, while downplaying Chico's struggle. They've also scaled back efforts to preserve the Amazon, leaving protected areas at risk all over again. Nearly half of the deforestation is taking place in protected areas, including the Chico Mendes Reserve, where ranchers are reportedly persuading rubber toppers to clear their land for money. Os próprios seringueiros, inclusive deles que fizeram parte da, da luta, né, hoje estão se dando a, a prática, né, 
de, de desmatar para criar gado. But some, like Raimundo Sun, are committed to keeping Chico's legacy alive. Para frente, mas a gente vai estar sempre lutando para a gente proteger isso aqui que os nossos pais conhecidos, amigos dos nossos pais lutaram e nós estamos estamos juntos para defender a causa deles. No primeiro momento ele pensava que estava defendendo o seringueiro e a floresta, mas depois ele se deu conta que estava fazendo um trabalho em defesa da Amazônia e do mundo. Hi, thanks for watching the second episode of Atlas in the Amazon's miniseries. I want to take a quick second to thank the filmmakers who filmed Chico Mendes and the Amazon in the 80s. That footage was crucial in allowing us to tell Chico's story and the role he played in trying to protect the Amazon. We are very grateful to them. In the next episode, we look at the struggle between indigenous people trying to protect their land and the president threatening to take their rights away. Make sure to come back and watch the third and final episode of Atlas in the Amazon's miniseries. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.